Okay, so we made it all the way to Module 3, which is customizing the QuickBooks environment. So this is the first section where we're going to talk a little bit about the preferences that are going to help you when you're working in your QuickBooks file. Now, first of all, here's how you access the preferences. You're going to go to Edit on the menu, and then down to Preferences at the very bottom. Now, when you first come into the Preferences window, you're going to see that you're on this group called Desktop View on the left. Let's start at the top and kind of work our way down so you can see the different options. Now there's a lot of preferences in here and I'm not going to talk about every single one of them, but I'll kind of hit the high points of the ones that I think would be most beneficial to you and then you can kind of play with the others. Now for each of these groups on the left, you're going to have a tab that says My Preferences and a tab that says Company Preferences. So you may have to click both of these to get to the different options you might want to turn on or off. So we're starting with accounting, and we're going to go to the Company Preferences tab. Okay, I want to talk to you about the very first one that says Use Account Numbers. Now I want you just to watch this for a second. I'm going to get out of the preferences, and one of the things that we're going to be doing over in Section 3 of this module is we're going to be talking a little bit about working with the chart of accounts. And remember, it's on your home screen, and it's right here and this is what it currently looks like. Now what you'll notice is that this list right now is set up, if you look at the types, then they're alphabetical per type. Now I'm going to go turn that preference on to show the account numbers and then this is what it will look like. So I'm going back to the Edit Preferences, I'm going to do the Accounting Grouping, Company Preferences, and I'm going to turn on Use Account Numbers. Now you'll notice that you actually have general ledger numbers along with the title of each of these accounts. Now in real life accounting, you're going to use general ledger numbers. Now the thing is that it assigns some generic numbers to these and you'll want to go through and actually edit these to whatever number you would like to use. If your accountant has asked you to turn these on, then ask your accountant to send over a list of the numbers they would like you to use that correlates with each of these particular descriptions here. So that's how you turn those on or off and you don't have to use them but in accounting they do use them. Okay, I'm going to go back to the preferences. Now back under the company preferences again for the accounting. That was use account numbers. So let's talk for a minute about this class option right here. Use class tracking for transactions. Right now I can run reports to see how my company is doing as a whole. I can see if we're making money, losing money, but I don't really have a way to segment my company file into sections unless I turn on the class feature. Now here's what this means. Every transaction that you're working on is going to have another field that says class with a drop down and you'll have to create that list. So some examples. I know of an attorney's office that is one business but they have four different attorneys that work in that business. So they want to run reports on how the whole company is doing but they'd also like to run reports on how each attorney individually is doing. So that's one way of using it. Another way is, um, I had mentioned to you way back in Module 1 that when you're working with the online version, one of the subscriptions that you can purchase has a location option. You don't have a location option in the desktop version, but that would allow you if you had a business and you had three or four different locations around the city, that you could track each location individually and also the company as a whole. So that's going to be beneficial in cases like that. You don't have to turn it on, but it's certainly an option that you can. Okay, so there's some other little things down here, like it will warn you if you try to enter a transaction that's 90 days in the past or 30 days in the future. But I want you to notice this closing date option where it says set date and password. Now, in real life accounting, you close the books at the end of the month and you close the books at the end of the year. Now, here's what this means. Let's say that it is September right now and I've closed the books through the end of August and I see a transaction I'd like to change. Maybe I entered something twice and I want to delete it. If it's prior to the end of August where I closed the books already, I'm not going to be able to just make that change. I'd need to make an offsetting entry in the current period. So that's what it means when people talk about closing the books. That's how it works.
In QuickBooks, it's not going to make you close your books. It's not even going to ask you. You're going to have to know to come here at the end of the month or at the end of the year and click on Set Date and Password. And it's going to allow you to actually tell it what date you want to close the books through and also allow you to set a password. So just know where that option is if you want to use it. Now on the left here, let's go down a little bit. I'm going to go down to the General option. And notice for some of these options, if you make a change, then it will ask you if you'd like to save those changes. So I'll say yes. Now in this case, I'll click on the My Preferences. Now this is the actual option that was on automatically when you first come into the Preferences. And you'll want to check this very first one, pressing Enter moves between the fields. Right now, if you did not have this turned on, and let's say you're entering a transaction, maybe an invoice, and you want to move from one field to the next, you would probably hit the Enter key. But what would happen is that would actually be the same thing as saving and closing the transaction, and then you're going to get confused and enter it again. If you turn this on, you can actually use Enter or Tab to move between the fields. It's a little thing, but it just means a lot when you figure out where it is. So there's some other options here. You can have it beep when you record a transaction, turn off pop-up messages. You probably want this one because there's a lot of things they can sell you and they'll have pop-ups trying to sell you those services. Probably this one here is going to be beneficial too. Automatically recall last transaction for this name. Now here's what this means. Let's say that you entered a check and you made it payable to your electric company. You're going to have to actually put some other information on that check. You'll probably want to put your account number, you're going to have to put the amount, you're going to have to put which account from the chart of accounts you want it to relate back to. Wouldn't it be nice if next month when you filled in the pay to the order of and you had that same electric company name that it fills in everything else for you and you just change the amount of money. That's really helpful for keeping your accounting consistent and saving you a lot of time. So that's a good one there. Also, you probably want to use today's date as default. That means that any transaction you create will have today's date on it automatically and you can change it if you need to. So you can see there's some other things on this screen, but those are kind of the big ones that you'll want to keep track of there. Now going down the list on the left, let's look at items and inventory. And again, I'll save my changes. Now on this one, you probably want to be on the Company Preferences tab. So do you remember when we went through the Easy Step interview and one of the questions it asked was, do you want to turn on the inventory feature? And you might have said yes or no, but here's where you can go turn those on or off. All right, the next one down is jobs and estimates. So one of the things it also asked us in the Easy Step interview was, would you like to use the estimate feature? Here's again where you can turn that on or off. Also the progress invoicing. So remember that nine times out of 10, if you create estimates, you do want progress invoicing as well. Also, if you're working a lot with different jobs, like we'll be talking about later on once we get started, you can actually set up different wording for these. So if you have a job that's pending, you can have any wording you like for these different options here. One other real quick thing, QuickBooks does have the ability to handle multiple currencies. So if you want it to track the multiple currencies for you, you can choose this yes option. And then what's going to happen is it's going to give you a little warning that says make sure you backed up your company file because once you turn this on, you can't turn it off. Okay, so just kind of know that. But it will allow you to go in and turn on the different currencies if you'd like for QuickBooks. So I'm going to go ahead and say no there because I don't want to turn it on right now. Okay, under the Payments option, again I'm under the Company Preferences tab. I just want to mention one of these real quick and it might not make sense till later, but see this one that says Use Undeposited Funds as Default to Deposit to Account. So what you're going to see is that when we talk about receiving payments from customers, and that'll be in Module 4, Section 5. The money is going to automatically go into this account called Undeposited Funds because we have this turned on. 
we can actually turn this off and then we'll have a choice of where to put the money. So when we get to that point, I'll bring you back in here and we'll turn this off and you'll see how this works. Now, let me just tell you real quick about this online payments option right here. If you have customers that you would like to send an invoice to them and then be able to click a button right then and there and pay you through the Intuit Payment Network service, then you can actually turn that feature on. And right here is where you can actually let them pay you online using a credit card or a bank transfer. So let's go down one more and look at payroll and employees. So I had mentioned to you as well in the Easy Step interview that you could turn the icons on in your screen for the payroll if you'd like. Here's again where if you did not turn them on previously, you can turn them on or off here. And you do have different options for payroll. Now these options are things like, do you want the employee's name to be sorted by first name or last name? Do you want to be able to track their sick and vacation? You can go set up preferences for all of this stuff here over on the right. But again, if you're going to use the payroll feature, you've got to sign up with one of the payroll subscriptions because it's not free. These are just the options after you've gotten it set up. So let's do this. We're getting on into this video. Let's go ahead and stop this one. And we do have a part two for the preferences. So let's go ahead and stop it now. And then I will see you over in part two. Hi, I'm Molly. Thanks for watching. If you need additional QuickBooks Pro training to help you effectively manage your small business, check out our complete training courses for QuickBooks Pro. Click the Learn More button on the left, and I'll see you next week with additional videos.